Hello, my friends. Today we are going to be talking about what a radical transformation clinic is, why you would want to take it, what's all involved, and how I particularly like to run my course. I'm going to give you a sneak peek into the back end or the class area, the course area, so that I can show you what the prerequisites are for this course towards the end. This is where I get to experiment with every single incoming group to see if I can find the best way to deliver this knowledge in a way that's the most practical. And yet still gives you the ability to have a deep and profound transformational shift in not only your personal awareness of yourself, but also your place within the whole, as in this path that you walk, the trajectory that you're on, so that you know from a deeper, more reliable and fundamental level how your body actually works. So to get rid of all the jargon, simply what we're going to be doing is every single week that we meet, we are going to look at your charts primarily, and there is a limit to five people live in this course, um, six total if one person wants to sign up that can't make it to the available time. But what I've noticed is five people in the group with me is the most that's comfortable for this kind of depth of the layering of the deeper levels of your human design body graph. So basically we're talking about your primary health system and your psychology. Now, one of the things that's really interesting about human design psychology is this is not your um, homogenized looking for what's wrong psychology. This is your specificities and the nuances and subtleties that make you very, very unique. So instead of diving into this and trying to be this, I want everybody to approach it with an open-minded curiosity to see what is there and not to try and force or push anything because we're all at different levels of our human design experiment and it takes a lot of time to decondition at a cellular level. Some of you are going to need this way more than others and I'll tell you exactly who that is in just a moment here. You can see um, when we look at a body graph at the top left hand corner there is an arrow Okay, so everybody look down at your body graph. If your arrow is pointing right like mine, you have way more of a likelihood of a homogenized brain system, meaning as soon as it is correct and possible in your human design experiment, it is very important that you begin with the first step of the primary health system, which is how you take in food. And food encompasses information because the right arrow, the right top left variable arrow when it's pointed right is way more sensitive to conditioning from birth, particularly how we were fed and how we took in information. So it really is key and important that you could dive deep into this aspect and see if it's correct for you. Now, that being said, it may not be correct for you right away. And it's really important not to force or push because if you do, what it does is it exacerbates your deconditioning symptoms. Has anybody ever felt like a complete, utter, chaotic mess in their deconditioning process? Here's Lavina raising her hand. Okay, because I started this process way too early because, you know, not knowing when enough is enough and trying to do it all right and hurry the process up. I don't want to wait any longer. Give me all this stuff for how old was I? 35 when I found this. So I immediately got a reading from an analyst, a, a foundation analysis, but one that I shared with my husband, who was also an emotional split definition projector. And she told me what to do at the very end as a side note. And I overzealously, religiously followed my primary health system, not understanding it completely to the detriment of my physical body. I made myself very, very sick. So it's really important if you go into the knowledge at this level that you have some expert guidance along the way and that you don't hurry up the process and that you listen to your body, you pay attention to the symptoms 
just like if everybody um, can ever think back to doing a detox, you know how a lot of times you feel worse before it gets better because all of those symptoms, those detoxing symptoms come up. That's the very thing we want to make sure that we manage. You might not be able to avoid some of the emotional breakdowns and, you know, the triggerings of the wounds. But over time, if you're very gentle and kind with yourself, you'll find that those wounds, the heaviness, the burdens become lighter and lighter, and your mind is less distorted as far as its dominance over what you think you are and what you have to do. That is the biggest benefit of all of this. But we always begin over here at this side, and I tell you, I have been experimenting for years with taking, especially my projectors, over to, this is the one, two, three, and four, over to the four first. And especially these people, the people with the right arrow, could not really grasp what I was talking about when it came to the motivational frequency. So in my final paper, I cover how I experimented with this and how it really is more important to start at the beginning in alignment with what these four transformations are. So I have had enough ranting there on, on why this is really important and who it's important for and why it's important to always experiment. Remember, applying it radically doesn't mean that you take what I tell you about what your deeper layers of your human design chart are and follow it religiously or zealously, like overzealously, like I did. It's about applying your human design strategy, honoring your authority, and really paying attention to your body always. Because you can damage, you can hurt yourself, you can make yourself really sick if you go into this without care for the body first. Okay, so that's why it's really important that we wait for right timing to move forward on any of these deeper le levels. So at this point, it's important to remember that you need to be ready as in having applied your strategy and authority in your daily routine and have already experienced the benefits of using strategy and authority as a decision-making tool. So that means you are already experiencing the sweetness of success, the satisfaction of following your sacral, you know, the um, reduction of the anger and the finding of the peace in the life, or being able to tune into the surprise if you're a reflector. And ideally, you sleep alone, meaning you don't have a cat with you, you don't have your dog with you, you don't have your partner with you, and in fact, you have at least two arms lengths distance bubble around you and if there's another person over there, they need two arms lengths distance as well. So I remember with my husband and I, when we were poorer, didn't have the ability to sleep in our own bedrooms, we would sleep in really big bedrooms really far away from each other and make sure that we had at least that so that we could re rest and rejuvenate. And it does make a difference. Now, I'm not going to be militant about this. If occasionally it's okay for you to sleep with your dog and cuddle, I know I don't sleep very well with anybody else. But once in a while, yeah, I'll take a nap with my puppy because it's cozy and it's fun to sleep in the sun, you know, so it's always your strategy and authority. But one of the most important things to unlearn is your mind's negating, shaming, guilting, you should, you shouldn't, and you cannot take what I say about your chart and use that as another excuse to berate yourself. That would not be helpful or supportive. Okay.